Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. I am Olakunle Kasumo. It has been an eventful last one week in the world of literature. After an anxious wait, the winners of the 2016 Nigeria Prize for Literature and the Nobel Prize for Literature were announced. We'll be looking at those awards later in the program. But first of all, welcome to the world of thriller books. I don't know about you, but I am a fan of the thriller, crime, and mystery genres. So I get to read them periodically. Before we go on, let's introduce to you or remind you of three of the most outstanding writers in these genres. John Ray Grisham Jr. is an American best-selling writer, lawyer, and politician known for his popular legal thrillers. His books have been translated into 42 languages and published internationally. As of 2012, his books had sold over 275 million copies worldwide. Stephen King is the author of more than 50 books and all of them are international bestsellers. Let's put that within context. Over 350 million copies of his books have been sold. Many of them have been adapted into feature films, miniseries, television shows and comic books. Lee Child is the number one international best-selling author of the Jack Reacher thrillers. Lee Child's books follow the adventures of Jack Reacher, a former American military policeman who wanders around the United States. Lee Child is actually the pen name for British writer Jim Grant. Now, back to Nigeria. Unfortunately, the country still does not have writers who are selling multi-million copies of their books. But hopefully that could change with time. What Nigeria does have is a gradual emergence of new writers who are creating exciting and gripping stories that are worth reading. Traditionally, the country has not had many writers who have explored genres like thriller, mystery, and suspense. But things are changing. There are a few new young writers who are boldly exploring those types of books. And what makes their stories particularly interesting is that they are set in modern African environments with contemporary events that today's urban Africans are very familiar with. It's one thing to read a thriller book set in London, New York, or Geneva. It's another thing to read one that is set in Lagos, Lome, Cairo, or Cape Town. We are featuring one of such new writers today. But let's first get into his new book titled The Conspiracy of Ravens, which might just be a real game changer. At the end of the Nigerian Civil War, a group of patriots selected by the government and headed by the Chief of Defense Staff clandestinely came together in 1972. Their aim? was to dedicate all resources available to defending the unity of the war-ravaged country. And an Operation Codename, Raven, was born. Operation Raven came up with a 32-man list of former Biafran top brass. With any of the men on this list alive, the realization of the Biafran dream is still a strong possibility. There is only one solution. Eliminate all of them over a 10-year period to avoid suspicion. The top secret file containing the death list was labeled Project Black Rose. To avoid a blowback, powerful influencers found the perfect assassin, a broken Ibo Connell with a deadly reputation and nothing left to lose. With a handsome financial reward and the promise of helping him find his lost grandson, Connell Azoro takes on the mission of activating Project Black Rose. But to wipe out any traces of the assassinations forever, the colonel is attacked on his way to the airport after his last mission and left for dead. Over 42 years later, Tariq Masude, leader of the Niger Delta militant group, is hell-bent on saving his land from the ills of oil exploration and giving his people a better life. For years, his people attacked minority, yet the country's source of livelihood flows from beneath their land. 
military vows to fight the government to a standstill for the injustice done to them. The South becomes a hot zone. Expatriates are kidnapped and oil platforms destroyed, grinding the nation's oil production and economy to a near halt. Now, don't get on the edge of your seat yet. That was just the synopsis of this book that is merely a fictional story written by Otuke Ominia Boss. It's a bold new entrance into the world of thrillers. Otuke took the Boko Haram insurgency, the militancy in the Niger Delta, and the Biafra War, wove them together, and created a tingling story with intriguing characters that can be enjoyed by anyone in any part of the world. Otuke is a poet, playwright, and the author of the novel titled Odufa. He joined us in our studio recently to review A Conspiracy of Ravens and discuss his adventure into writing. Nice to have you on Channels Book Club. Thank you so much for having me. Conspir a Conspiracy of Ravens. Yes. First of all, let me tell you that um, once I started reading your book, I couldn't stop until I finished. And considering it's volume 401 pages, <laughs> uh, that, that's a big compliment. As much as I read uh, big books, I take my time, a long time, you know, and so But well done. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. Um, but for the sake of those who are not familiar with this book, let's start with a general overview. And I've got a few questions for you. Okay. Um, a Conspiracy of Ravens. What's it about? Well, it's just a story that um, captures what is going on right now in Nigeria, basically. Uh, in it, I try to show what's going on in the Niger Delta with the militants or the so-called Avengers, and um, also what's going on in the North, the whole Boko Haram crisis and everything. So it's a combination of what's going on right now, what we're presently facing in our country. Okay. I mean, you've, you've, what you've done here is you, you've taken um, writings of famous thriller writers out there, you know, and then you've mixed up everything with Niger mm -hmm. stories, <laughs> yes. you know, which is very exciting. <laughs> uh, Boko Haram, Niger Delta militants, you know, uh, uh, and, and so on. Were you out to... to entertain primarily or were you out to just talk about those issues primarily what was it for you for me um i think i would say entertainment is my number one goal as a writer but then again i would say this when i get a story that keeps me awake at night then i know that it's something that people out there should listen to or should read that was what this did for me. Um, I also wanted to shed light on what was going on. I'm from the Niger Delta. I also wanted to shed some lights about what was going on there, you know. And but basically, I just wanted to entertain. I wanted to write a book that would keep the reader turning the pages, and at the same time, skillfully passing a message without asserting whatever it was that. I was trying to pass. So this kept you up awake? Yes, it, it kept me awake for five years, many oh, nights. Five years? Yes. Writing the book or the issues? Writing the book took me almost five years. Hmm, interesting. Is that, a, that seems to be the, the in thing now. Um, Edifier Yakusak wrote about what's happening in Joss. Abubakar Adam uh, yes. wrote about what's happening in Joss. You are writing about what's happening in Niger, Niger Delta. Delta. Yeah, because... If That's it, good news, isn't it? It is, actually. Um, literature actually is supposed to show the states of a particular people at any given time. If you look at literature from like 20 years ago, you can see the state of the people and the country of that time. So right now, I think there's just a consciousness amongst us, the youths, you know. It's, it's like our responsibility without even knowing it. We're doing these things without even thinking so much about them. Because someone has to document these things. And as writers, I think we are custodians of, these, of our history. And that's what we are doing without even knowing it. 
It's exciting. I mean, it's. I find it really, really exciting because it's one thing to read, uh, maybe a book written by Harold Robbins. Yeah. You know, set in wherever, anywhere else in the world. It's another thing to read about um, Tari in the Niger Delta. Yeah. You know, or um, what's the name of that guy? The, Danny. The, uh, Sh Shamsuddin, Shamsuddin in, of, uh, in, uh, of Boko Haram Boko and all that. You know, and, and see all those stories captured, you know, in, in a book written by a Nigerian and all that. It's really exciting. Um, okay. Now, let's explore your mind now. Okay. Because, to be honest, I found this book more entertaining than, <laughs> than that, about the issues. Yes. Yeah, that's, I found it more entertaining than about the issues. Yes. So really entertaining. Let's explore your mind a bit. Tell me how you created all those, where did all those characters come from? Well, the there's Tari. Yes, there's the, Danny. The militant leader. There's yeah. Danny. There's Garuba. There's Garuba, the, the crazy one. It's crazy one, yeah, <laughs> crazy one. Um, there, there is, there is um, um, the old man. Yeah, the fixer. The fixer. Yeah. Um, there's Anthony Clark. There's the, Alex. The president. Yeah. The SSS. Alex. Uh, Alex. Yes. SSS, the British journalist. Yeah, Brooke Cochrane. Brooke, Brooke Cochrane. Cochrane. Yeah. Um, there is what's her what's her boyfriend's name? Morgan. That's Morgan. Yes. Um, and, and then, then there's then, Colin Ender, the PI. PI okay, who came around. Yeah. yeah. Then there is there is. Um, what's the name of the, the girlfriend the of say, the Italian leader? Say, the the say. The say. Yes. Very interesting character. Yeah. You know, and, and so many. Tell tell me about all those, <laughs> where did all those characters come come from? Well, um, I have read a lot of um, thrillers. In fact, I grew up reading thrillers. I never really read any other genre. So um, I think I had I have more of an action mind. You know, I've always wanted to do thrillers. I've always wanted to, you know, write something that would keep people flipping the pages, something that you'd be reading and be like, wow, look at, look at what just happened here. I always wanted to be able to do that. And The Conspiracy of Ravens gave me that opportunity to bring out that, all the that, action that, part of you. that I've been reading all these years, <laughs> you know, bring it out. And I was just, it was, it was as much fun to write it as I'm, I'm sure it was as much fun. It took me, I really enjoyed writing it. You know, so I, I, the characters just came. They just all started coming alive. Just, I don't know, from thin air. I didn't really sit down to say, let me structure out how this character was going to, you know, form out or turn out. I just wanted to show human beings. Another thing I need to tell you about my work is I, I like to build my stories on characters. Okay. I believe characters are like the structures, the pillars in a building. The story is just the building, the, the bricks and everything. That's so you start with the characters, yes. and then the stories come out of I want characters that are as lifelike as possible. So I think of people who I can... I mean, I, I can almost see Tari. Tari is someone who I probably should have, I would have met or I could meet someday. You know, so I, I take that into consideration. And that's how these characters came into being. Okay. I needed people, I needed people to play these roles. So to play these roles, I had to think, how would you, if I were to play this role, how would I, how would I look, how would I talk, how would I sound, you know, what would be my temperament? So I created the people to fit into these roles. Do you have strong political views? Um, I, I mean, I thought while reading, I thought, I mean, you definitely should, must have strong political views. It was like, it was... They were oozing out of this. That, or, or were, they, were they just ideas that's created? That's the irony of it all. You don't. Now, I don't even, when it comes to politics, um, uh, just don't even call me. I was shocked when someone read this book and the person said, wow, okay, guess what? You've written a beautiful political thriller. And I'm like, what? It's a, political, it's a thriller. political thriller? I just wrote a book. <laughs> you know, I had a story and I just told it. I didn't really concern you myself. You were not thinking politics. I wasn't thinking politics. I just wanted to tell a story. 